Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video we are going to take a close look at the GS5 Pro from AliExpress. <laughs> it comes with 2.4 GB controllers. We're having an SD card so we can add new stuff to it, HDMI function and 4K Ultra HD and this is absolutely nonsense. But the 4K is absolutely a lie. These things you don't even run on 1080p most of the time. What are we going to get inside the box? We're going to get ourselves the system itself and the PlayStation knockoff controllers. Not the 5 that we've seen in previous models. It's going to be 32-bit and yep, this thing plays all kinds of retro games. All the way up to PlayStation 1, the 8-bit, 16-bit era, some Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, Arcade and of course we're going to get ourselves the PlayStation and it even has Atari. So this thing has a lot to offer. So let's take a close look in the inside of what I'm actually going to get. We're going to get two beautiful white controllers. Then we're having the device itself. Uh, let's see, we're going to get ourselves the necessary cabling. And they are using, let's do a quick peek. Oh man, they're using micro USB. HDMI cable, of course, the tiny cute stand. And here we do have the system itself. But the thing I wanted really curious about is the controls itself. Okay, the first test is that how is the overall quality. And when I'm looking at it and feeling it, it's going to be the okay quality, because we have the chip to the chip chip quality, but this is more like the more expensive one. We do have like the long travel buttons, they're not like the special sensitive buttons with the PlayStation 2, the technology. They're just a basic button that we have like with the old school stuff. But we know not going to need anything fancy of course, because we do have only retro gaming. At the bottom we're going to get the on and off switch, and at the back we're going to get ourselves the compartment for two batteries, two AAA. Yeah, there is no lithium battery in the inside. This is actually what we're going to get. It's old school. The device itself looks like on PlayStation 1, like the previous model, and they did a quite nice job. At the front, we're going to get two USB connections, the reset and the power. And at the back, we're going to get ourselves the HDMI, the micro SD card, and the input for the micro USB. I wish they used Type-C, it's so much more convenient. But when it comes to the power supply, there is nothing. So you need to use just some basic charger, because this thing runs on 5 volts. At the bottom, we're going to get ourselves this piece of plastic. It's kind of cool that we're having a very tiny stand like the original system. When it comes to the mimicking or the fake version mini, they did an amazing job and this is absolutely a fun novelty to have in your collection if you just find it a very cool thing to have. But how is it actually with the gameplay itself? So I already noticed that there was no dongle in the first controller, so I'm guessing they messed it up. Like, why is my freaking dongle? Ah, there we have. So when booting up, we do need to wait a couple of minutes for the system has been started. The first screen just shows very quickly loading and after that we're going to get ourselves the loading screen that is already having loaded to the third part of the loading. What's kind of interesting is that we do have a background that is related to the PlayStation. Because the logos they're using is like the original logo it seems to be from the original system. It's kind of interesting. But let's take a close look at the menu itself. The menu is something we have already seen many times before, or I did. And if you didn't subscribe, subscribe to the channel because you will see a lot of weird stuff here on the channel. And one of the things I've, many, I've seen many times, including handhelds, is this menu. We're going to get this gigantic list of all of the products. Pressing up and down brings you to the next game. It will show you a picture or a couple of pictures in this case. Pressing right or left, we're going to skip to the next page. So pressing the L1 and R1, we're going to get a quick overview of all of the different categories. We're having all the way up to PlayStation 1. Then we're having the history. Collection is basically the favorite list. And here we can search the game. But the overall, let's see, settings, the stuff you're going to get, there's nothing you can do with it. One thing I've noticed is quite interesting, but also quite annoying. So I wanted to boot up a game and it takes freaking forever. This is just an old school meme game. If this is just an issue with the overall emulator or like the product, or is it just having a very cheap slow card? Because that's what they're using most of the time. Cheap fake stuff, including the card. So it's recommended to back up. And yep, we're going to get a black screen for some time and then we're actually going to be booting it up. Pressing select and start will bring you to a special menu where you can make a quick load, quick save. You can mess around with the controls, but that's the only thing we can do with it. Another problem I've noticed when you're going to get into a certain class, they call it, or category, 
you're clicking on the certain icon oh boy it takes like freaking forever depending on how many files you need to load up so the overall experience it's kind of clunky when it comes to the menu also the response it feels like having a delay every single time you're pressing a button there's not a do with the controller it's just a menu that works not at all so let's start off with some playstation one because this is the most demanding system and listening to the audio I can already tell this is going to be running absolutely garbage. It's quite interesting to see how they can mess it up because nowadays a lot of different devices can run it without any problems. And I'm talking about $60 devices. So they absolutely dropped the ball with the PlayStation 1. Another problem I noticed is that when I'm getting into the menu with some games like PlayStation 1, it doesn't work at all. So even this is a freaking problem. So let's reset the system itself. There we go. Or turn it on and off because it does actually the same thing. But let's get into the 16-bit stuff and I can already tell you it's completely messed up. When pressing pause you can see all kinds of glitches occurring. It's absolutely a freaking nightmare. The overall gameplay experience is kind of choppy. I don't know what's going on over here. I just wanted to see what happens when we're going to try in Game Boy Advance game. Already audio says that it's going to be absolutely bar garbage. There is nothing running so far on this device like it should be. But this is absolutely a case that they bring out a product. I think they didn't even like test it. And when they're testing it, it's going to be about closed eyes or something like that. Because everybody can just see in here that it's not like it's supposed to be running. Oh, I didn't record it, but I already noticed some glitching going on. Oh, there we have it. So the emulator is not running like it should be. The far the audio sounds great. The buttons are completely mapped wrong compared with the original Super NES controller. But you don't see the glitching going on when it comes to the actual gameplay. So where this game looks absolutely horrible, stretched to the maximum level, I really love the soundtrack. But let's get into the Atari and just to see actually what we're going to get with the old school Dig Dog game. If it's going to be running properly or it's going to be absolutely garbage. Seems to be working fine. Let's try some NES and I can tell you they are using a filter over this and of course it's going to be a 16 by 9. Nevertheless, what we're going to get is not bad emulation at all. So the overall quality is not bad when it comes to, let's say, the audio and that kind of things. So not everything is messed up, if you ask me. But let's take a close look inside the mini PlayStation 5. There were no screws whatsoever. What you need to do is just a rip and tear moment. So yeah, there is nothing much inside. There is not even a piece of metal to give this thing some weight. This is just like full plastic fantastic moment. One thing is like... We do have some like heat coming from the chip, but not to the point it's going to be like you can fry an egg on it. But what we're going to get is the rock chip. Yup, they're using a very old rock chip inside this machine. And so far I can see there is nothing changed. So there is, in my opinion, nothing pro about it. This is just actually the same kind of product with different controllers. You can even see this thing is made in 2022. So as making this video, this thing is already quite old. And at the front we're going to get another PCB and that is contached with a ribbon cable. Then we're having the on off switch and the micro switch and of course the two USB ports. That's it, that's the only thing that we're going to get in the inside. There is nothing in my opinion changed whatsoever. In my opinion this thing is one big gigantic pro flop. The GS5 Pro, there is nothing pro about it. Maybe it's pro because it's extra sh let's say problematic than the previous model. There was nothing much they changed out. It's just the same brand, same product, only with a different label on it. Absolutely garbage emulation overall. Like I couldn't really enjoy it. Maybe in a couple of NES games it runs great, but it's absolutely a missed opportunity. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Thank you for watching and it would be great to see you in the next video.